hello and welcome back. So today we're beginning our adventure into inferential statistics. Now, <clears throat> just to review, statistics in general can be split into two main branches. We've got descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Now, descriptive statistics, that involves the organization, the summarization, and the display of data. Inferential statistics, well, that's about using a sample to draw a conclusion about a population. So let's do a bit of review on vocabulary here. Population. That's the collection of all outcomes, responses, measurements, or counts that are of interest. For example, we could say that the population is every teenager in the United States, or all of the M&Ms manufactured in May, or all of the 2020 Ford F-150s, or every senior at Pine Creek High School. Now, what's a sample? Well, a sample, it's just a subset of a population. So I guess the question becomes, why use a sample? Isn't it more accurate to just study the whole population? Well, yeah, it is. But there are some problems to studying the entire population. So some reasons to use samples would be just the prohibitive cost of studying the entire population. Or perhaps destruction of the item being studied. Think about those M&Ms. Or it just literally may not be possible to test or inspect all members of a particular population. Okay, next word is parameter. A parameter is a numerical description of a population characteristic. Let me say that again. A parameter is a numerical description of a population characteristic. A statistic is also a numerical description, but it's of a sample characteristic. A statistic is a numerical description of a sample characteristic. Okay, so in general, we have our data, and that data we can get from populations or samples. If we gather data from a population, that numerical description is called a parameter. If we get our data from a sample, that numerical description is called a statistic. Now, where does all this sample data come from? Early on in our study of statistics, we learned about different ways of collecting data, like observations, experiments, simulations, or surveys. Now, no matter how we collect the data, we really need to collect the data in a way that most accurately represents the population being studied. Of course, despite the best sampling methods, some what we call sample error may occur, and we really want to minimize that. So the best way to minimize error is what we call sampling techniques. I'd like to show you four of the main sampling techniques here. First up is the simple random sample. So let's say you have a group of people. In a simple random sample, every member has an equal chance of being selected. One way to do this would be to give each member of the population a number and then use a random number generator for the actual selection. Next up is the systematic sample. So same group of people, but you start with some random nth person and then you pick every kth person. So for example, we're gonna start with the second person and from there, we're gonna pick every third person after that. So in this technique, the sample is chosen at like regular intervals. I could imagine um, perhaps this going at something like the TSA security lines at the airport. The next type of sample is called the stratified sample. So in a stratified sample, we'll divide the population into subgroups that share key characteristics, perhaps like this. And then based on proportions, we'll take a random sample from each group. So this could be like splitting up the school into grades first and then taking a sample from each grade. Finally, the cluster sample. So we're gonna use subgroups again, but this time 
each subgroup reflects or kind of looks similar to the population as a whole. And then from here, whole groups are selected at random. Now, once you get your sample and gather your data, there is still something else to consider when working with populations and samples. First, we actually have different letter symbols to identify the characteristics of each. Populations are tagged with Greek letters and samples are tagged with Latin letters. If the letters are the same, we can use capital for population and lowercase for sample. For example, the size of a data set is a capital N for the population, lowercase n for the sample. So just by glancing at a formula, you can see which group it applies to. And speaking of formulas, some formulas for statistics are a bit different depending on if we're working with samples or if we're working with populations. So let's check some of these out. First up is the mean. So for populations and samples, well, the formula is the same. You just add up all the values and divide by how many values there are. It's only the labels that are different. The mean of a population is named mu, and the mean of a sample is called x bar. Now on to variance. For the population, the variance is called sigma squared. And here's the formula that we've worked with before. For the sample, the variance is called s squared. And this time, there is a difference in the formula. To control for the smaller sample size, the denominator for the sample is n minus one. And finally, we have standard deviation. For each, it's just the square root of the variance. So we have sigma and s. Let's look at how this shows up on the calculator. Let's say you put in a list of numbers into your TI-83 or 84, and then you ask it to calculate the one variable steps. You'll come up with something that looks like this. Now, the calculator doesn't know if your data is from a population or from a sample. So it just calls the mean X bar, but since the formulas are the same, then if your list is a population, then you can use this from you. The calculator does know that the formula for variance and standard deviation are different. So it shows you both and you need to know which one to pick. So this is just a quick overview of populations versus samples, but it's enough to get us started on our adventure in inferential statistics. Thanks for being here.